Hi, welcome to this video. We're going to develop now exercises 5 to 8 of the short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, the fifth question says The inflation rate is 10%, and the central bank is considering a slowing the rate of money growth to reduce inflation to 5%. Economist Milton believes that expectations of inflation change quickly in response to new policies, whereas economist James believe that expectations are very sluggish. Which economist is more likely to favor the proposed change in monetary policy? Why? Well, remember that when we are uh, calculating on the unemployment rate, it depends on the natural unemployment as well as the expectations. The, the expectations or the difference with expectations which is uh, higher to this gap with the actual inflation, it provides uh, more difference between unemployment rate and the uh, natural unemployment rate. So then, if, expectations react, if the expectations react to monetary policy, it means that people believe on a strategy for a central bank, then it should be a um, react in the actual unemployment rate. Other side should be when the expectations do not react to monetary policy, then un under this situation, under this situation, we have that the unemployment rate will not change too much. Six. Suppose the Federal Reserve's policy is to maintain low and, low and stable inflation by keeping unemployment and stable inflation by keeping unemployment at its natural rate. However, the Fed believes that the natural rate of unemployment is 4%, when the actual natural rate is 5%. If the Fed based its policy decisions on its belief, what would happen to the economy? How might the Fed come to realize that its belief about the natural rate was mistaken? Well, if we um, depict the situation, we have inflation in the y-axis, we have x in the x-axis, we have the unemployment rate, we have the vertical line, which should be the long-run Phillips curve, which should be 4%. This is the, uh, the belief of the Fed. And then we have this level. Uh, of five percent should be the the real one so then actually we should be in something more than p2 compared with p1 so then when uh the policymakers make a contractionist policy so they they expect to go definitely to p1 to p2 but then actually the situation is this one so then when we are here actually fed realize when the movement will go this over five percent in a contractionist uh, policy so then when uh, any any policy is uh, carried out then under this situation probably fed will realize that the the the, the idea that it was four four percent was not okay because of the level of actually of because of the of, of the level of the prices then this due to the level of the prices that uh, the real data will provide p2 instead of p1 this should be the answer why or how the fed will realize that it was wrong okay seventh suppose the federal reserve announced that it would pursue a contractionary monetary uh, policy to reduce inflation rate would the following conditions make the issue in recession more or less severe? Explain. Well, the first one, well, here we have the situation of the aggregate demand. So this is a recession, contraction in the level of prices and contraction in the level of output. A. Wage contracts have short duration. Well, if it adjusts easily to change in prices, it will make less severe because under this uh, change, under this change, all the wages will adjust better to the to the change in prices. B. There is little confidence in the Fed's determination to reduce inflation. Well, 
it will be less severe as well because there is not going to be a real change in the aggregate demand due to the expectations or due to the well the idea of the people so then the aggregate demand will shift to the to the left however uh lower than people believe and the in the situation of the central bank c expectation of inflation adjusts quickly to actual inflation well under this situation uh, it should be again a less severe contractions due to the monetary policy is definitely effective so then the there is going to be just like um the 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 change it should be it should be lower for example in the unemployment rate should be exactly the same as the natural unemployment because of the gap is exactly is zero due to the actual inflation is exactly equal to the expectation expected uh inflation eight as described in the chapter the federal reserve in 2008 faced a decrease in aggregate demand caused by the housing and financial crisis and a decrease in short-run aggregate supply caused by rising commodity prices a starting from a long-run equilibrium illustrated effects of these two changes using both an aggregate supply aggregate demand diagram and the phillips curve diagram on both diagrams label the initial long run equilibrium as point A and the resulting short run equilibrium as point B. For each of the following variables, state whether it rises or falls or whether the impact is ambiguous. Output unemployment, the price level and inflation rate. Well, we have in this part the situation of the aggregate demand. So here we have uh, contractions of the aggregate demand. Then as a consequence, we have naturally well a decrease in the in the output i put here p1 because i kept um the level of prices exactly the same i want to show you why because it's still um missing the the chalk in the aggregate supply so then here the situation of the phillips curve so then here we have the equilibrium in the long run phillips curve in the p2 u2 then this is the long run uh, aggregate supply and then it's going to be a contraction as well in the aggregate uh supply so then as you can see here we see a reduction in total output and then we have an ambiguous situation of the prices so then probably we can be uh, in p2 we can be above if the change in the aggregate supply is, is larger than the change in the aggregate demand or we have over under p2 under the case is the opposite the change in the aggregate demand is larger than the change in the aggregate supply b suppose the fed responds quickly to these shocks and adjust monetary policy to keep unemployment and output at the natural rates what action would it take on the same set of graph of part a show the results labeled the equilibrium as point c well, exactly, we have the same. We have a choke in the aggregate demand. We have a choke in the aggregate supply. So there is a disadjustment in the situation. Remember that the idea of the monetary policy in the case we have larger prices, they should be like kind of contraction. Is in the case that we are under here, we need um, um, expansion monetary to reach again P2. So here, the situation uh, we are going to increase the ad2 enough to compensate the change in both curves and then we are going to uh, finish with p2 this one should be this this level of prices but exactly the same level of output as a consequence we are going to face we're going to move more than from p2 to p1 due to this uh due to this change what might the fed not choose not to pursue the course of action described in part b well in the case that the aggregate supply was larger than the aggregate demand remember that we are facing a higher level of prices so then maybe the federal reserve this courage to make this change because this is going to generate a higher increase in prices so maybe an inflation pressure okay i hope it has helped um I would say that this one was kind of tricky because maybe there are more open questions. But I hope it has helped a little bit to understand uh, better the questions. And that's it. See you next video. Bye bye.